Welcome back, Farouk here at Direct Hub, and I got some good news for you. So around five years ago in 2020, I released an Excel topic checklist for the civil FE exam, mechanical, the environmental, and other disciplines FE exam. And this included all the topics we have to study per NCS specifications, included the subtopics and the approximate number of questions we should expect to be tested for each topic. And also we had a nice pie chart that showed us the heavily weighted topics with the most number of questions tested versus those are that are not heavily weighted with the lowest number of questions and obviously as i said in the past we should spend more quality study time on the heavily weighted topics with the most number of questions tested on the real exam but today i'm going to tell you these topics did not change since 2020 they're still the same topics for all these disciplines but I did make some updates to the FE exam checklist and you're going to like these, especially if you're starting your FE exam prep today. Let me show you the updates. Note, you can download this in the link below for your specific discipline. It's only for the civil, mechanical, environmental, and other disciplines FE exam. Let's look at an example here for the civil. Keep in mind, let's say you're doing mechanical. It's the same idea here. Here's the mechanical one that I have pulled up as well topics checklist monthly calendar weekly calendar but as an example let me look at the civil one as we see it right here first of all like in 2020 a long time ago but the topics did not change we still have the topics and these i want you to always pull this up because this is the stuff you should be focusing on and your resource should focus on these topics if it's not it's not a good resource now the subtopics that's also very important. We have to cover these one by one. This is under math and statistics and other the geometry, single variable, vector, and statistics for that. And the approximate number of questions in this case for the whole topic of mathematics and statistics will be eight questions. Then the same thing repeats for ethics. These are the subtopics. Number of questions is around four, four graded questions. Then we know we can take the summation until the very end. The total number of questions will be 100. So on the real exam, keep in mind, we're graded on 100 questions. Even though the real exam is 110 questions, 10 questions are pre-test items. Those are thrown out. They don't count toward your grade, nor do they count against your grade. So it's only 100 questions that are graded on the real exam. So approximately, this is how it's weighted. And notice how the afternoon section, which is construction, transportation, geotechnical, structural, water resources, that's going to be the afternoon for the civil. That's going to be heavily weighted because it does test those in-depth, more difficult topics that most students struggle with in the afternoon section. But this is really good to look at also along with this pie chart that we have because it shows us the weight of these topics if you look at ethics and professional practice you're not going to spend as much time on that but you're still going to study it because there's going to be some easy points that you can grab from ethics and professional practice and any point you can get any correct answer you can get will count toward your score and increase your chance of hitting that weird unknown skilled passing score set by the NCES. So that's ethics, and the same goes for dynamics. Even though it's not heavily weighted, for dynamics, if we go on the left here, we see that it's about four questions that are graded. Still study it, especially if it's fundamental questions, easy questions, calculator questions, F equals MA, inclined plane. Those are not bad. They're doable. So still study it. Do not discount the importance, but you're not going to spend a lot of quality study time when compared to, let's say, the water resource structural. A big one is the mechanics and materials, math and statistics, statics. That's very important. So that's how I would balance my studying for these topics. For the low-weighted topics, don't go too in-depth. Just cover the fundamentals. Make sure you get the plug and chuck, easy questions, and master those. So that is the first page. And here, this is new. Just added this to always remind you that this is the exam day process non-disclosure agreement two minutes tutorial is eight minutes then we have the first section topics so you choose how long to spend on each section we have to balance out the time ideally for the first section you're going to spend around 2.5 hours 
Then take a 25 minute break. Always take the break, recharge, get a snack in. Then go in the afternoon section and you're going to spend around 2.5 hours and some minutes on that as well. The actual exam time is 5 hours and 20 minutes. Again, you choose how long to spend on each section. So balance out your time and simulate that with full length practice exams at the end of your preparation. So this is always good to look at as you proceed and closer to your exam date. Now let's go to the next step. Here is where the big updates were made. We have the topic. And these, again, is for civil. And the same thing is for mechanical, just to show you that. We go here, update it for the mechanical per NCS specifications. Let's go back to the civil. We have the subtopic. Now, for each subtopic, there's the option and the question for you. Did you complete studying this? If yes, check this off. Did you complete and cover the concepts did you do the practice problems depending on the resource you're using let's say you're using youtube videos let's say you're using my free course you're using maybe my paid course did you complete all the practice problems that i have for you that you can print out as a pdf if so check that off along with the conceptual videos we have in the course if you're using my course it just depends on the resource but check that off once you completed what you planned to complete and you're going to do that for each subtopic as you continue one day at a time one topic at a time for all the topics and all the subtopics now what else do we have this one is new as well the confidence level how confident do you feel with each subtopic let's say analytic geometry most students do okay with this they feel confident Maybe the stuff for the civil is the conic sections. I know those are difficult, but let's say for that, you felt pretty good. Let's say you did a four on that. When you put a four, notice that bar chart increases and the highest will be five in terms of confidence. Let's say you felt like you mastered everything, you would put a five. So that would be the highest. But now let's look at a tough one, statistics. So this one, especially for the distribution's not bad, but the probability type of problems and things like that. So for this one, I'm a little confused on probability and some of that T distribution, normal distribution. So maybe I'm going to put a two and that's going to show me how confident I am, especially when I go back and review. So I see that through a visual bar chart and I want you to do this for each subtopic. So that's going to be the confidence level one to five now the number of practice problems done so this one is optional again depending on the resource you use in my course i give a, a book of practice problems and also students take it to the next level with additional practice and quizzes but we know for math and statistics let's say the resource you're using has a total of 100 you're going to put that down and quantify that number exactly the number that you did to give you a number and a good idea of how much practice you're putting in relative to the other topics. So in my course, let's say we have around 80 or so practice problems for this topic. You're going to write that down for those PDF practice problems. With the quizzes, this might run up to 110 practice problems just for math and statistics, which is a big topic. It covers look at all these subtopics. That's a lot of questions and just a lot of subjects four to five subjects just in one math and statistics so it is going to take some time to finish that but then don't worry it goes faster with ethics and professional practice so let's say with this one you did 50 or 40 questions 40 would be on the high side i would say for ethics and professional practice so those are the practice problems and you can maybe change this if you want you're welcome to edit this to your goal of doing a certain amount of practice problems could be your goal for the practice problems or the number of practice problems you got done and practiced through. That's going to be that column. Now let's keep going and look at the flag for review. So this is first and we're going in order here. Flag for review, yes or no. So for example, a lot of students will not flag analytic geometry and likely vectors, nor will they flag that and single variable calculus some will somewhat but let's say for analytic geometry i'm not gonna flag it i felt good with it during my first run so this flag for review is 
right when you're getting started. You're exposed to new concepts, new practice problems. So that's when you have this option. Do you want to flag it for review for later? Could be yes or no. Could be anything. So it just depends on what you're good at, what you're weak in, and so on. So we know that is a no, but let's say I go here. Which one is a tough one for me that always gives me trouble? It's going to be this dynamics. But again, we said it's four questions. So for this one, I'm going to very likely flag for review the, let's see, we go rigid body kinematics or the power work and power. So I'm going to put yes for this one. What else? What else do I struggle with on the first run? It would be okay. Construction is tough. It's a little vague for me. Let's say this project administration stuff. This one, I'm going to also flag for review. So that's going to be the column here and project administration. Yes. And you get the idea. So you're going to select this based on the first run. Are you going to flag it for review? Yes or no. Then you're going to move on to the next one. Do you feel like this is a weak area? So let's say after doing the practice problems and getting enough practice, is this a weak area that you're really noticing you're struggling with your own weak area? If it is right, yes. If not, put no. So this really depends on what you're good at and an indicator of this is the results you're getting on the practice problems, the score. In my course, the quizzes, you take a quiz for math and statistics. What's going to be the score? Are you scoring low 40s? I would say if that's the case, it's a weak area. But if you're scoring 65% and above on these tough quizzes I have in the course, it's probably not a weak area. You're on the right track. So that's going to be when we would put this near the end of completing the entire topic is when you want to do this, let's say for math and statistics. And then last review, this is important. When was the last day you reviewed this? This could be a combination for the whole math and statistics. You could do that, make an edit to this Excel sheet. And you're going to put that date because reviewing here encourages something we call space repetition. Let's say you're moving all the way down here to this topic, which is the statics. And you haven't touched math and statistics in some time in a long time. You're going to go back and force yourself to review and revise on topics you studied in the past. So you would have to put this in. And I definitely encourage this and encourage take advantage of that strategy called space repetition at the end to not forget things easy, to not forget what you learned in the past, which is very common for this exam because it tests so many topics. It's so broad, 14 topics all at once. Reviewing is key to not forget what you learned in the past. So fill this out in terms of a date here for the last review. You're welcome to do this just for the whole topic and you can even just merge this. It's totally up to you and then you put the the date here, depending on when you did that last review. So you can fill that out for each topic. And lastly, notes to self. So this is optional. You can put, let's say, little mistakes you're making. It could be silly mistakes. Let's say a calculator mistake. It could be, let's say, you're struggling with something very specific, conic sections, hyperbola. Keep it simple here. Just little notes to yourself. It could be what you're really good at. And what you want to really focus on to take advantage of that and become stronger at what you're really good at. Could be traps and errors. Just about anything, notes to yourself, you can put that here for each topic. So that's what we have when we look at this part, the topic checklist and tracker as example for the Sybil FE. Now we have a monthly calendar. This was updated and added as well. So this one is going to, let's say I start my prep. What's today? The 23rd. So July 23rd. So we are in July. No, you change it here. Then it gets updated. So we are starting on the 23rd and I want to start doing practice today. And what I'm going to do is go here, math and statistics. Notice this is a new feature that you can actually select the specific topic for your specific discipline that you plan to study based on this monthly calendar view.
And also, let's say on a Friday, I don't want to study. That's my rest day. So I'll call it break day. And I'm going to make sure I have break days maybe every Friday, every Saturday. Then I'm going to come back and continue with math, math and statistics, which does take some practice and fill that out as in my monthly calendar. So this is really good to have and it gives you a good idea. Let's say leading up to an exam date, maybe it's right here. You can put exam date. That's when you booked it. So then you can build your schedule based on that exam date for the specific topics you plan to study and also depending on the resource that you're using because that will govern how fast you go through these topics. And also you can write whatever you want just something to keep in mind. And lastly, the weekly schedule planner. This one, personally, I do not use often. I like the monthly calendar view and just go and run with that. But if you want to do things on a weekly basis with weekly objectives, let's say do the quiz for math and statistics for that week. If you're using my course or if you're using videos or other resources, you can note down specific achievable small weekly objectives that are realistic to do items, deadlines for the week related to your FE exam prep. And here, this is just on a weekly basis and you can change this. I believe it starts, the week starts on Monday for this, but you can change the, for it to start on a Sunday. If you prefer the week starting on a Sunday, that's a weekly schedule planner. So that's what we have. And again, you can get this in the link below for all the topics. This is civil. There's one for mechanical, environmental, and FE, the other disciplines exam. I really hope you find this helpful. And if you have questions, please let me know in the comments below.